Hey guys, today I'm taking apart an electrostatic uh, cathode ray tube. This is uh, what you would find in an old-fashioned oscilloscope. Uh, so it's actually a very small oscilloscope. The whole screen diameter is only about three inches. And I used a diamond uh, cutoff wheel and a dremel, and I cut the back of the tube open and then pulled out the guts. So this, the ele whole electron gun assembly was inside there and cut the screen off. I'm going to use the screen in another project, that phosphor screen. It's probably a zinc sulfide screen or something. It's got a nice green dot. And um, I think I might use the heater out of this in another project as well. So the glass tube is, uh, has a coating on the inside. And I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Aqua dag? Aqua dag? Whatever. It's, it's basically a graphite slurry that was poured inside there to make the inside of the tube conductive. So the idea is that you don't want uh, electrons charging up this glass tube, so they, they added that conductive coating in there. So the way that cathode ray tubes work uh, is by accelerating electrons and slamming them into a fluorescent screen. So in this case, the electrons start out over here at the beginning of the electron gun and are focused, accelerated, and deflected by this whole assembly here and make their way all the way out to the front where they hit the screen and the fluorescent uh, phosphor there produces a, a spot of light where the electrons are striking. So this technology I guess is kind of going out of style. I mean with plasma and LCD monitors there's not really much need for this anymore. Uh, there are a few benefits though. One is that the screen can update extremely fast. So for analog oscilloscopes, you can have the trace moving extremely fast. I mean, much faster than you can see with your eye. And so the phosphor has a persistence to it. So that as the trace goes tearing across the screen, the phosphor actually shows a line where that electron beam was moving, even though the beam itself was going much too fast to see. So uh, let's uh, take a closer look at the gun here and see what's going on inside there. Okay, so here's a close-up of the electron gun assembly and the electrons start out inside this metal can here. So this uh, uses a, a so-called thermionic cathode where there's a tungsten filament in there that gets very hot. This is partially why TVs have so much heat coming out the back. Most of the heat that the tube uses is wasted in this filament here just as thermal energy that comes off. But some of that energy is used to so-called boil off electrons off of this cathode. And what happens is there's sort of a cloud of free electrons inside this can. Uh, after you have the cloud of electrons there, we want to shoot them at the screen. And the way to do that is to put a potential difference in this cloud area. So this can is at a positive voltage and this one is at a negative voltage and as soon as the electrons get into that space between the cans they experience a very high acceleration force. So when I say potential difference we're talking about I think for this particular CRT it was maybe a thousand volts. Uh, for color TVs it's quite a bit higher uh, but for monochrome oscilloscope type things with just electrostatic deflection it's, it's really need like a thousand volts, maybe two thousand depending how big the screen is. And then you'll see as the electrons continue down through here, there's more of these cans, electrodes, to deal with. And these handle the focusing operation. So as the electrons are beamed through here, they naturally want to repel from each other because they have similar charges. Uh, just sort of like two pieces of styrofoam that sort of push against each other. The little electrons try to separate out. And the purpose of these electrodes is to focus the beam into a pretty narrow path. Uh, we don't want the beam too narrow though because if it strikes the phosphor screen with a tiny little point, uh, the dot isn't going to be big enough to see. So really the goal is to get a dot that's maybe half a millimeter or a millimeter in diameter when the system is at perfect focus. Um, so after we get through this electrode here, the beam is hopefully focused and will produce a, a correctly sized spot on the screen. And the last part of this gun are these deflection plates. So you can see that there are two plates 
and they're, they angle out at the end, and this, this is sort of, let's say this is the y direction. If I turn this thing around, you can see that there's plates uh, orthogonal, so it handles both axes there. And by putting a potential difference across these plates, the beam will deflect, and of course, in either axis. Here's a shot looking down the end of the gun, and what you're seeing are the two deflection plates for one of the axes, and the hole is the last focusing electrode there. Let's take a closer look at the focusing assembly. So what we have here is one entire metal can uh, electrode that spans from here all the way to here. Then there's a middle one and one at the end again. And as you can see, these two electrodes, the first one and the last one, are joined together electrically. And the middle one is at a different potential. There, there's a different line that takes that one out, outside the tube. And uh, this is known as an Einzel lens. Uh, an electro when, when you have electrodes spaced like this, you can call it a lens because as the beam of electrons uh, fires through the middle, the effect of these potential differences causes the beam to focus. So it actually is very analogous to light optics and uh, a convex lens of sorts. So the f uh, voltages on these are fairly high, too. They're on the order of the accelerating voltage. So if this tube is operating at a thousand volts, maybe there's going to be 800 volts to focus it. Uh, so in that case, this can and the last can would be at the accelerating voltage of a thousand, and the middle electrode would be at 800 or something like that. I actually didn't use this tube before I took it apart, so I'm not exactly sure. Here's another structure that's interesting. Uh, most vacuum tubes have this. This is called a getter. And the function of this is actually just to keep the atmosphere inside the tube as clean as possible. So it actually doesn't have any effect on the electronics of the gun. Uh, its purpose is to deposit some, usually a reactive metal like magnesium or something like that, on the inside of the glass. And so actually I should have taken a shot of this first. Now it just looks like a bunch of white ash inside here. But originally it was probably a shiny little patch of metal. And so if you look at most vacuum tubes, you'll see that there is like a a very shiny sort of a mirrored surface on the inside and the purpose of that is just to um, absorb oxygen and other impurities that might uh, come out of substances inside the tube. So for example if there are some oxygen atoms that are uh, stuck on the surface of this metal can when they put the tube together and suck out all of the air there might be some oxygen that slowly leaches out and would degrade the performance of the tube. So as sort of extra insurance, this little getter here deposits uh, aluminum on the outside or the, on the inside of the glass, and those oxygen atoms will bond with the uh, magnesium or aluminum or whatever it is and form an oxide, which is stable. So it gets the molecules out of the, uh, out of the vacuum inside there and maintains a good vacuum. Okay, so here's a, uh, a little bit more modern oscilloscope, still fairly old. This is a full analog oscilloscope, and it has a CRT that's very similar to the one that I just took apart, uh, but it has a few small updates, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But I wanted to show you this deflection voltage idea. So in the old, in the gun that we saw earlier, uh, it has these deflection plates, and I said that if you put a potential difference across these plates, the electron beam as it's coming through here will get deflected and that's how the dot is moved on the screen. So let's see that in action. What I've got here is the X deflection voltage, the, the actual difference between these plates being measured on the meter over there. And right now it's just about zero and the dot is pretty close to the center. So if I turn this so that the dot moves to the right, we can see the voltage is climbing and it's hitting about 100 volts as the dot is hitting the right side of the screen and if we go all the way over to the left side of the screen we've got negative 86 volts so pretty close. The, the actual center is not quite in the center of the screen so if I dial this to zero volts we're about half a division to the left. Now interestingly if we monitor the, the y-axis the voltages are not as high and the reason for that is that the, the y-axis deflection plates are closer to the front so that they have a bigger effect on where the electron will end uh, on the screen. 
So for example, if the electron is deflected in the y direction first, it has a longer to go before it hits the screen, and therefore it'll have a higher deflection uh, for the same acceleration uh, due to these plates here. So you might wonder, if this is using electrostatic beam deflection, what's going on with this coil of wire over here? This is a, a, um, a trace rotation uh, equalizer. So if there's a part of the coil, or if there's a part of the CRT or some other piece in the oscilloscope that gets slightly magnetized, the beam of electrons will rotate about the center of the CRT axis. So this sets up a magnetic field that you can control uh, with the trace rotation control on the front, and that will fix the beam uh, and make it perfectly level with the, with the um, division markings on the front of the screen. So in this case, the magnetic field is circling around that coil of wire, so the field is basically going in the direction of the uh, electron beam, and that will cause it to rotate about the center of that coil. This oscilloscope also has an interesting adjustment called astigmatism. And watch what this does. Now generally you can't adjust the astigmatism from the front panel because it's something that is set at the factory. Uh, what's happening here is the voltage between the deflection plates. There's another electrode hiding between the, the, the X and the Y deflection plates that has a different voltage on it. And by changing that voltage, uh, the beam is either flattened out in the x direction or in the y direction. So in conjunction with the focus control, the beam can be made into a nice round point. If the astigmatism is off, you may not get a very good focus. And if it's way off, you end up with a flat little squished pancake looking kind of a thing there instead of a nice dot. Uh, the tube that I took apart before, that small one, and showed the electron gun, that one did not have an astigmatism control because it used the same um, focus voltage. So there was no separate adjustment on that one. All right, well, I hope this is helpful. See you next time.